Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm so glad that you are here because I could not keep this to myself. The governing body is finally going to address the Norwegian government. If you have not heard, recently the Norwegian government decided to revoke the Jehovah's Witness tax exemption, which meant they lost last year in 2021 over $1 million. I think it was almost like one and a half million dollars. And now Norway has just given the Jehovah's Witness a short amount of time to address their shunning policies, saying that if they do not stop the policy of shunning, which they believe to be child abuse, they are also going to revoke their religious status. Yes, the Jehovah's Witnesses will lose their status as a religious organization in Norway. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I have been anxiously waiting for them to address this. I'm sure you have too. In this recent update, the governing body also said some other strange things that I want to watch with you because I just don't think that we should overlook it. Stick around. We're going to get to it. Okay, welcome back. Before we get into the governing body addressing the Norwegian government, first, I want to let Anthony Morris talk about why they need some 16,000 new kingdom halls to be built and many others to be repaired. It just never ends. Right, here we go. It's also encouraging to hear that the local design construction work is moving ahead. Where there are no government restrictions, Kingdom Hall construction groups have restarted. What theocratic construction is on the horizon? We now need over 15,700 new Kingdom Halls and major renovations around the world. We need these Kingdom Halls for our in-person meetings. To be Okay, first off, you just went two years proving that you actually in fact did not need in-person kingdom halls and it was suffice of just to meet online with your little webcams and meet up in little groups just to encourage each other and meeting up for field service or whatever it is you do but now there's this desperate need for more kingdom halls the only reason there's a need is because you're saying there is and then like you have done in the past you will start selling kingdom halls you just sold, I don't know how many, I'll probably have to put that on the screen. And now you want to build new kingdom halls. This is extortion. This is how they extort money from people and their time and their tools and their efforts and their talents. Okay. Rant over. Again, addressing these needs, over 1,600 projects worldwide are planned for this year alone. And branches are also working hard to prepare facilities for in-person circuit assemblies and theocratic schools starting in January 2023. Oh, great. More theocratic schools because it's exactly what we need is more people who really do not know how to understand their Bible because they're getting fed all of this empty spiritual food with zero calories, no fat, no protein, no vitamins. There's this spiritual food is devoid of any nutrition. And they think they're going to be the most biblically literate people. And I have to tell you, you absolutely will not be. The best way to be biblically literate is to read your Bible on your own. I'm going to I'm going to pop a little article up for you to read. And it shows you that unequivocally, the more you read your Bible, you'll understand it better and you'll probably become an atheist, but you don't have to be, but you definitely will not need to rely on the word of some man to explain it to you. They don't have any more knowledge than you do. You can study on your own. Theocratic school, my ass. Can you make yourself available to help with theocratic construction? Ask your congregation elders for more information. It's wonderful to see young people assisting with the work. Think of the training they're receiving now that they'll be able to use during the great rebuilding work after Armageddon. Oh, did you hear that? You don't need to go to school and get an education because 
if you simply put all of your faith, your time, your effort into this organization and even go to this super cool place, you're going to get all the training you need on how to be biblically illiterate and how to build stuff. Kingdom halls, in fact. What great skills. Now listen, I'm not saying that reading the Bible is not something that can be good for you. And I'm not saying that learning how to build things can't be good for you. Obviously, that's a great trade. But this is being turned and manipulated into some kind of opportunity for for young people to spend their life in dedication to doing stuff to these old men in this organization and what they say needs to be done. Hey, future me chiming in here. My computer ran out of disk space and I wanted to make sure I came back and added a few things that I think I missed when I was editing. Here's what I wanted to say. We know why the Jehovah's Witnesses focus on indoctrinating children while they're young. They just don't know any better. They don't have the critical thinking skills that an adult has. But what happens is these children don't grow up with the choice. So these are the choices that they have. And to anybody in the audience who says, hey, well, at least they can get some kind of external education. You said that they said all education is bad. At least this is something. And building things is a great skill to have. I agree. But not everybody going there will be treated equal. That's not fair. Absolutely, the women will not be afforded the same opportunities that the men would. They already are treated unfairly. And I'm sure the same would go for people with disabilities or maybe even people of color get treated differently. I'm not there, so I couldn't tell you, but I wouldn't doubt it because of how the world is. So I don't feel like that's a fair education. That's not a fair shake at life when you're going to be treated differently. You should be afforded the same level playing field. All right, don't be frustrated. Come on, we got this. Yeah, I just ran. I don't really have anywhere to go with that. I hope you understand. Like when you come to this channel, I'm just going to... We have another exciting update regarding freedom of worship. Okay, okay. So here, now he's starting to talk about Norway. And notice what he just said. We have another exciting update regarding freedom of worship. We have another exciting update regarding... Freedom of worship. Let's talk about body language and how his face is not emoting excitement. He looks quite sour. <laughs> and baby, his hands are gripping that table. <clears throat> Holding on for dear life. He is not relaxed one bit. An exciting update. Again, this is pivoted as an opportunity. This is going to be an opportunity for the Jehovah's Witness organization. A door being opened for them. How exciting. And it's also going to be another way to need your donations. Chef's kiss. As Jesus foretold in Matthew 10, 22, we Prophecy. face much opposition. Jesus said, and you will be hated by all people on account of my name. I don't hate you, bro. I just dislike you a lot. <laughs> to assist Jehovah's people, we have recently established the Freedom of Worship Office at the Central Europe Branch. Okay, Freedom of Worship Office at Europe Central Branch. So this is now being spun into an opportunity to create an entire litigious group that will now be able to tackle Babylon the Great, who is attacking Jehovah's organization. This is all divine prophecy, my friends, splayed out in the Bible right here for you and I to witness. It's a miracle of miracles. Don't save the children. Don't help the poor and needy. Help Jehovah's organization slay the mighty dragon. Oh. <laughs> this headquarters department will coordinate our efforts to defend our worship in Europe. Now, you might be wondering 
the work has been established throughout Europe for many years. So is this really needed? Yes, it is. For example, recently the government of Norway decided that Jehovah's Witnesses would no longer receive certain state benefits that are provided to all registered religions. Here to explain. Boy, you love your state benefits, don't you? You're okay with that. You're okay with using the government at any time that you need, that you feel it suits your life. But you wouldn't say the same for other people taking opportunities in this world for themselves to make a better life for them. Wow, ironic. Explain more about this is Brother Jürgen Pedersen. Jürgen, we I don't like how he said it. When Sorry. we received a letter from government authorities in Oslo, Norway, threatening to remove our registration as a religious community. Let me stop you right there because no, you weren't shocked. They warned you that because shunning is violating human rights, especially children, that is who they're protecting, which you don't protect. They told you you could possibly lose your religious registration after losing your benefits. So this is not a shock. You knew this was coming. Stop lying. Jehovah's Witnesses have been actively preaching the good news in Norway for more than 120 years. In fact, Jehovah's Witnesses suffered for their faith under the Nazi occupation of Norway during World War II. Commenting on how Jehovah's Witnesses were the only religious group who stood firm against the Nazis, a previous minister for religion exclaimed, people throughout the country should know about this especially young ones, would benefit from this information. We've always been known as good citizens. In fact, a public report stated that Jehovah's Witnesses are careful to obey the laws of the land. And that's exactly it. If the laws of the land say that it is child abuse to alienate somebody against their will, then you have to abide by the laws of the land. What don't you get about that? But now you're going to wield all of your power and authority, all the money that you've accumulated by extorting your, your people against the government, who's basically protecting children, which you refuse to do, which you have just said you will not change your policies. You've said this before about your two-person rule. You stand firm in your arrogance. You harm people, you abuse people, and then when somebody stands up to you, you say, oh my God, I'm being persecuted. And you completely change it. And that's exactly what a gaslighter would do. Children do not have choice in this organization. They do not know what they are signing up for. They don't know the repercussions of the decision to get baptized. Regardless if it's against their will or with their will, if they agreed to it or not, they don't know what they're signing up for. Oh, we're not even going to mention the fact that we know exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses were doing when it, come, when it came to Nazi Germany. They were writing letters to Hitler saying that they commended him for what he was doing. And they, too, thought the Jewish people were not good people. So utter bullshit on how great citizens you are. Maybe your people were good people, but the people running it, the governing body or the members who had the authority and the power at the time were not good people and were taking advantage of vulnerable people and telling them they were being persecuted. This is all prophesied and you led thousands of people to their death. Really frustrating because it's so inhumane how they treat people so callously and just throw their lives away. Okay, I've realized just after reading some that there's a possibility that the Jehovah's Witness grossly overestimated the number of people who died by the hands of um, the Nazis in Germany. If anybody knows any more about that, can you let me know? It says that it's in the 1974 yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses that only 203 were put to death, um, 600 died in camps. And not that that's not a lot, That's it's one too many. But I was always told that it was like 6,000 plus. So can anybody help me out? Anyway, everything about this organization shows that they truly do not care about their members. It's obvious. Okay, I need to shut up. Now they've suspended our grants. While there are over 700 religious communities who continue to receive such state benefits. 
This decision is unconstitutional and an unprecedented. So you want what the world has? You shouldn't want worldly things. You should be more humble. Try it. Attack on religious freedom in Norway. With the assistance of the newly established Freedom of Worship Office, we're pursuing legal remedies. At the same time, we're pursuing dialogue with government officials, and we pray that this situation will be amicably resolved. Amicably resolved. I actually have a resolution for you. Here, just hear me out here. It's going to be easy. Stop shunning people. It's abuse. It goes against their civil rights. Just stop. And maybe then you won't be so persecuted. People could have their loved ones back. Imagine that. More peace for those who live here in this world right now. You could fill their hearts with love by allowing them to associate with their loved ones. I know. That's wild. Who does that? Thank you, Brother Pedersen. The authorities in Norway have threatened to remove our legal reg registration. Okay, I guess I shouldn't be laughing because I'm not really sure how to say his name, but that just didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, that didn't sound right. And can we, like y'all, you know I don't like to attack people. But when it comes to people like him, I just, I want you to notice, like, homie sitting, like, hands away. Like, his arms are down at his side, and his hands are at his desk, and he's just, like, bumping. He's just about bumping that desk. We all bloat down here. Times are running out. Nation because of our scriptural beliefs and practices regarding disfellowshipping. In the future, various governments will challenge our freedom of worship. They may pressure us to change our scriptural beliefs, but we're comes... certainly not going to do that. <laughs> we are certainly not going to protect children. What? As Brother Pedersen mentioned, Efforts are being made to address this issue. In the meantime, please make it a matter of prayer. Well, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. Absolutely, Tony Morris. And I'm sure they will help you with this situation. Okay, y'all. I think that's it. Let me check. At the beginning of the pandemic, men... Yeah, y'all can watch that on your own. I'm, I'm not going to make you... I'm not going to sit here and go through that. I really just want to talk about what we just witnessed here. And did you notice how Tony started this all off engaging the audience with something exciting? We have a great opportunity and the opportunity is for a legal group that they have just formed to help them fight for their freedom to shun people. Let's just lay it out on the line. Let's get down to brass tacks. That's exactly what it is. They want to be able to continue to abuse and separate families. And Norway isn't having any of it. And my hat's off to freaking Norway. I respect you so much. That mm -hmm. is what I hope someday our government could be like and actually care about children and protect people's rights. I love that the Norwegian parliament is often speaking out about injustices around the world. They spoke out recently about Roe v. Wade being overturned here in America. And they're also addressing what's happening in Iran with the illegitimate Islamic regime taking over and killing people and killing children um, and also taking them to prison and so I commend them, and I hope that maybe one day more governments can be exactly like them. Here's hoping. We weren't given our rights in this country. Women weren't given their rights in this country, and children basically don't even have rights for the most part. They're just property of their parents. And we had to fight for our rights to be able to vote. People of color had to fight for their rights to get freedom, to get their right to vote. 
wasn't handed over to them. Power isn't just handed over to people. You have to fight for it. And you want to silence people. You won't allow people to fight for their freedoms and for their rights. But yet here you are wielding your power as you do, manipulating people into believing that somehow this whole situation is prophesied in the Bible and you are the victim. You're being persecuted, a sign of the times, and now you need people's money and you need people's help. And you need people's thoughts and prayers. And this is all on you. You have created this entire mess because of your decisions. But you will not be held accountable. But you will hold other people accountable for their mistakes. By disfellowshipping them. If you ask me, y'all need to be disfellowshipped. I think the organization should say, we need to disfellowship the governing body. Okay, I know that's just like a fever dream. Mm -hmm. But this is so asinine and ridiculous and ironic that you have the gall to speak like this to your members. And I just hope that they are critically thinking about this. I hope that they are asking themselves questions. I hope that little by little this starts to chip away at the shell, at the glasses that they have over their eyes, these rose-colored glasses that just sees the organization as this shining perfect example, just like Jesus. They're infallible men, just like you and I. They're no different, no better, not better at interpreting anything. You and I can interpret the Bible just as well as they can. You don't need them. They're snake oil salesmen, and they're flipping this entire situation to make it look like they're the ones being harmed. And this is just a brand new way of God opening a door for you and for them to realize that they are the chosen organization. It's obvious. Oh my God. They just foreshadow it and then they play into it. It's a narcissistic dream. I, I can't with this. How, how do y'all feel? How are you sitting with this? Because I'm just kind of sick and beside myself. I'm trying to process. I mean, I figured as much. I, I figured this is exactly what they were going to do. I thought they were going to paint themselves as the victim, and here they did. Um, my friends and I talked about this on the Apostate Coalition channel. You should go check that out. Wally, um, JW Thoughts, Jonathan, X Witness Awake, Ray, I think it's Ray Janae on TikTok. But anyway, we all talked about this situation and what we thought was going to come from it. And... I'm kind of waiting to see what they have to say. I want to talk to them and see if they're shocked or if they felt this is exactly what was going to happen. Uh, do I have anything else to say? Let me think. Is there anything else? Oh, that's right. I got to get those articles and put them up there. I have two articles I said I need to get. I need to figure out how many Kingdom Halls were sold. Like how are, like how are you build, asking for money? You need to build more Kingdom Halls, yet you're selling Kingdom Halls. Like the math is not adding up. It's not mathable. Doesn't, doesn't click. They need a better calculator. Um, I mean, of course, if you put these burdens on people, they're just going to rise up to the occasion. That's what they're told to do. They are your little sheep. They're your flock. They believe everything you say wholeheartedly. So if you say more money, more time, they're going to give it to you. It's really sad. Ugh. Oh, what else? Oh, you know what? I also figured I should address what's going on in Spain. I promise you that every single day I am hitting Google Spain, victims of abuse, Jehovah's Witness, Sue, court. Like I am Googling everything, trying to get an update, but as of yet, there's nothing. The last thing that I heard was from somebody, I believe, who lives in Spain and said that this court case could be going on to mid-December. So it, it's just a matter of time. It could be another week or two. I'm not sure, but I promise you every day, every day I'm Googling, oh okay i got a little crazy um so as soon as i find anything out y'all be the first to know
I'm going to wrap this up. If I missed anything, let me know what you think about how the Jehovah's Witnesses handled this situation. Mr. TM, not looking so swell, buddy. Sweating under the pressure. I know he's feeling it. That blood pressure. Ooh, lordy. I'd love to know what that number is. I am still working on my video about the gods that came before the God promise you as soon as I can. It's a lot. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of writing. So it's coming. I promise. I'm, I, 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 if you want more information, I have a lot of this stuff already on my TikTok. It's just a matter of compiling it and make it make sense because it's a lot of information and it was overwhelming for me to learn at first. So I don't want to overwhelm you. And I, I want it to be like simple and practically self-explanatory and you could walk away going like oh I get it and I could tell other people about it anyhow that's my hope and dream I will talk to you all soon I love you so much thank you for watching this community means so much to me honestly you have no idea this is like my outlet not everybody gets me not everybody gets what I'm going through but you all do and that makes me feel safe and secure and like I've found a home Welcome home. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye.